Uh, hi, Rich. I'm Craig Drugi with Hardcore Computer. So for our readers who may not be familiar with Hardcore, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about what you guys do and, uh, and your technology? Sure. I'm a VP of sales and also a mechanical engineer uh, that was brought on from Hardcore. Spent 10 years in the HVAC manufacturing industry and another eight years in the IT industry. And it's really those two technologies, the convergence of heat recovery and excessive, relentless, high performance on the IT side that has manifested itself here in Hardcore, which is pretty interesting. Five years ago, our founder, Chad Atlasy, kind of was experiencing problems and saw out there in the industry, well, chips were getting faster, they were also getting hotter, and it was leading to a lot of failure. And we see a lot of components out here on the floor today that people are trying to still reactively address that problem with more fans and more elaborate cooling scenarios. So rather than being reactive to the situation, kind of started looking proactive at the situation. And as electromechanical equipment becomes more industrial grade, there's many examples, transformers and other IT equipment in the past, such as mainframes, that have become actually directly liquid cooled. So our intellectual property revolves in our dielectric fluid called our, cold, uh, called our core coolant, which gives us a 1,350 times better advantage for the heat recovery rejection of the fluid before anyone starts to try and remove heat whatsoever. So that advantage allows us, here we're showing our workstation model, which has been shipping for over three years, Hardcore is a five-year-old company. Um, that machine right now is running overclocked on the Intel 5690 at 4.2 gigahertz. So significant 20 to 40 percent advantage while running it. It's in a dielectric fluid, there's no oxidation, there's no contaminants, and as you can hear, it's silent right now. Um, it has a heat exchanger in it and a small pump in the back, so this is a standalone workstation very good for engineering type environments. And we've had manufacturers and hospitals say that they've seen a 7x, anywhere between a 4x and 7x improvement in performance versus their other blade servers. So increasing performance, making things run longer, it's a bigger system. The evolution kind of took place to bring it over here to a blade system and that we're able to take all the core components of a computer and change the form factor so that it is in a, a blade that is fully upgradable and our fluid runs across there. There's no moving parts in that entire blade. So coming around here, Rich, you can spin around maybe this way, see okay. the back end. We got quick connect, dripless connections that come in the back, and this is obviously just a demo system, but sure. you'll have either InfiniBand or um, 10 gig uh, Ethernet connections on the back, and you have a hot connection that comes out. And we obviously just have a demo system here in the back. Um, but what then happens is we can put up to 64 of these liquid blades in a single chassis. So many times we're replacing three and four racks of servers with one rack of our here, Rich, as you'll see, there's the inside of it, and there's a schematic kind of showing that the cooler fluid is going in. Again, this is dielectric fluid, completely protecting the inside of the equipment, no contaminants keeping everything at a nice 75 to 80 degrees, the hot fluid comes out. So you see it's extruded aluminum. There's, we're not worried about any sand or dust or air and contaminants of any of that. So we can sell these individually into caustic and hazardous harsh environments, but if we're selling them into data centers then, we just manifold the back really nice and easily, and there's not a single fan in that entire unit. So literally with one rack of this, we're replacing thousands of fans, um, hundreds to thousands of fans in data centers that we can then take that energy out and we can do a couple things with it. We can actually, if you're in a northern climate, we can use that heat through a heat exchanger and a series of fan coils to actually heat the external perimeter of other buildings. So it's really your, your data center is now producing the heat for your facility. Or you can run it through a uh, air -to -air, liquid to liquid heat exchanger and really reduce the need for all these crack systems that are creating all that energy, all that maintenance, all that waste. And now you can actually reclaim that space. So we don't ever sweep the floor entirely of other systems, but if you're a data center manager and you need to add onto your floor, a good way to do it might be to consider decommissioning a couple cracks or at least not having to buy more cracks. And then we can consolidate with just a couple racks of hardcore HCI liquid blade servers. You're gonna get faster performance. They're gonna last longer real easy to change out, and Mortensen Construction did a study that actually showed we have 80% less energy consumption. So this was their study, not ours, and they used hard numbers from their mission critical data center builder that uh, they put facilities in all over the world. So that's really the net of it. Higher performance, stay cooler, uh, run a lot, 
uh, easier and at higher performance, and, and we're seeing customers give us a lot of great This could either be hard pipe or flex pipe, depending on what the facility wanted. You could run this down underneath, you could run this up over and above the, in the ceiling. So you have a lot of flexibility. Now you've actually given yourself um, a nice variable for the data center in that you can do heat rejection really anywhere. You could run this 100, 200 feet. You might have another area of the facility that needs heat. A lot of people have loading bays where in the middle of winter they're constantly opening closing big big doors and sending out um, periodicals or other things. So you can actually heat the facility in other areas or you simply are just reducing the amount of cycles that it takes to get that heat into the chilled water system. So regardless you're saving energy and you actually have the ability to recover that heat and do useful work with it if you're in one of those climates that can use the heat. And we have customers from anywhere from Saudi Arabia to Costa Rica that are looking at this saying their energy is so expensive and their square footage is so small, it's really becoming wider adoption in those areas. But as the United States feels the crunch on energy pricing and people want higher performance and smaller footprint, as we start to see more of that, um, we don't believe it's going to be in reactive solutions that are introducing more and more fans, more and more noise, more and more energy waste. Uh, we believe we got a pretty good offering here, and you're going to see other major server manufacturers. I won't mention them by name, but they have the three-letter logos, and, and you're probably pretty confident uh, you've heard of them. They're able to sell these products today, so if you currently buy from one of those three-letter uh, and two-letter server manufacturers, talk to your rep and uh, see if you're interested in learning about a liquid-cooled blade. You can buy it and get it supported through your traditional uh, server providers. Okay, well listen, thanks so much for giving us an overview of Hardcore and uh, Liquid Blade. Well, Rich, pleasure talking to you. Thanks for spending a little time with us. Appreciate it. Uh, go to hardcorecomputer.com, give us a call. We'd be happy to do a webcast and explain the engineering technology to anyone who's interested. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much.